This week, after the reflections in the Psalms with prayer went live, I received a text message from a friend who said that they were just going on a prayer walk and that they were going to pray for me because they sensed that I was feeling very tired. Well, after watching back the video, I was really struck by how obvious it was how much the current situation is taking its toll. I've sensed over the last few weeks that this has been the case for many of us. Perhaps you feel like this glass of water. Not so much that you're simply tired, but that you feel depleted. Certainly over this last year, we have had to dig deep to find the resources to deal with the situation that we find ourselves in. Well, today, as we prepare ourselves for communion, then I think that it is important to remember the period that they're in, we're in, to be mindful that it is currently Lent. Lent reminds us of how Jesus prepared for his ministry, particularly when he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he faced many challenges. The wilderness is a recurring theme throughout the Bible. We will briefly consider three experiences in the wilderness, storm, desert and mountain. Perhaps when you think of a classic story of a mountain experience, you'll be reminded of the prophet Elijah. Throughout scriptures, mountains have figured largely as a symbol of God's stability and security. After all, it is only God who can move mountains. Mountains are wild places where you can meet God in his awesome power. As a mountaineer, I've had first-hand experience of the danger and the wildness of mountains. When setting out on a walk, the weather could be sunny in the valley, but life-threatening as you get closer to the top. Well, the prophet Elijah would have experienced this as he fled into the wilderness from the queen who was intent on his murder. He travelled for 40 days and nights to Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai, on a journey where the Spirit provided for him and directed him. It tells us in 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 11 to 12 that the Lord told him to go out and stand before me on the mountains. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. You can imagine Elijah in the wilderness, standing on the mountain, facing the reality of the hostile environment where the spirit had led him. And behind him in hot pursuit was the queen. Well, perhaps as we think about the desert, it might remind us of the time when the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. It says in Luke chapter 4, verses 2, that Jesus ate nothing all that time and that he became very hungry. Well, the devil tried to use Jesus' hunger against him. He questioned God's provision as he said, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. Well, you can imagine that as Jesus looked out across the wilderness, the barren land would have reflected back his feeling of deep hunger. Perhaps when you imagine a storm, you might be reminded of that one day when Jesus was with his disciples and he directed them to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. And as they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon 
a fierce storm came onto the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. Well, perhaps you can imagine this raging storm. Being on the boat, not knowing what to do, thinking that all we can do is wake our master up in desperation. Well, it seems like a pretty fair action to me. I mean, how he was sleeping during such a storm is beyond me. But in each of these wilderness situations, the mountain, the storm, and the desert, Elijah, Jesus, and the disciples, they appeared to have reached the end of their human resources. Elijah, he was hiding in fear for his life while experiencing the wild of the mountain. Jesus was empty from hunger in the barren land and the disciples were literally fearing for their lives as the storm raged around them. Well, interestingly, it is in these situations that God taught each of them a valuable lesson. Each situation tested their commitment to trust the will and purpose of God in their life. As Elijah experienced the loud and dramatic mountain, he stood his ground and he listened for God's voice. When he heard God's voice, he wrapped his face up in his cloak and he went out into the elements to hear what God was saying. His ears ringing after the wild sounds of the mountain. You can imagine Elijah straining to listen to the gentle whisper of God's voice asking, What are you doing here, Elijah? In Elijah's actions, Elijah demonstrated the importance to learning to listen to who you trust. The two are related. Who we take the time to really listen to shows how much we really trust them. And how much we trust somebody dictates how much we will actively learn to listen to them. Well, as we come to the desert, as Jesus faced his testing, as his stomach felt hollow from lack of food and the devil tempted him to make his own bread, he would surely have been reminded of the time that Israel was in the wilderness and God's people accused Moses of leading them into the desert to starve. At the time, God's people would rather have gone back to their captivity under the Pharaoh and had a full stomach. Surely Jesus would have been reminded of the Israelites. But where the Israelites failed to trust God's provision, Jesus was unwavering. He quoted from the scriptures in Deuteronomy, which says people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Finally, in the storm, the disciples, some of whom who were hardened fishermen, who woke up their master in desperation as they faced the wild storm, their boat was filling with water. They woke up Jesus shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. But when Jesus woke up, he calmed the storm, then asked the disciples, where is your faith? Jesus gave the disciples a tangible demonstration of the importance of trusting in the presence of God. As we consider our depleted cup of waters, it might remind us that being followers of Jesus does not exempt us from the struggles of life. 
We are constantly tempted to mistrust God's readiness to empower us. We stand with one foot in God's presence, but another out as we try to face our trials in our own strength. We might be tempted to question God's helpfulness or say we depend on God, and yet in reality, it does not show. But we learn from the trials in the wilderness that the scriptures point to, that our relationship with God, it must be an active relationship. You see, no matter how close we get this glass to a tap, unless we turn the tap on, it will not fill up the glass. In the same way, unless we really open our hearts to God, then we're not inviting him to fill us afresh in his spirit. It's all about trust. It's about trusting in what God has to say to us, learning how to listen to his voice, his will in our lives. It's about trusting in God's provision in our lives. It's about trusting in his presence. As we come today to Jesus' table of hospitality, we are reminded of how in Jesus' life and death, he demonstrated his complete and utter trust and dependence on God during times of great joy, but also during times of deep wilderness. I do pray today that if you feel like this glass, if you feel depleted, if you are feeling a bit empty, that you might be able to take some time to allow God to fill your hearts by trusting in him. Trusting that he will provide for you. Trusting in his presence and demonstrating your trust in him by learning to listen for his voice. I pray this for you this morning because I sense deeply that it's just not just me that is feeling tired, that is feeling depleted, but we're all feeling tired. We're all feeling depleted. And isn't Lent a time when we can be reminded of how Jesus led the way of taking the time to go into the wilderness, to rest in God's presence, to trust him and allow himself to be filled anew with the Spirit.